Hey friend, I'm Robin May and a few of the professional hats that I wear includes being a transformational speaker, a life coach, and a licensed therapist. And personally, well, I'm a wife, a mommy to three girls, and a pastor's wife, just to name a few. Girl, I'm over here doing all the things while trying to stay in shape and keep my skin clear. But the truth is, I don't want to be known for being busy. I think that's a scheme that somebody set up. No, I want to be known for living a life that is in perfect alignment with what God intended. And I want to help you do the same. So it's with that in mind, I'd like to welcome you right here to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Over here, we're creating a safe space to have real conversations with real women on real topics. This is a judgment-free zone where we can be vulnerable and honest and curious about our lives so that we can elevate not just what we do, but who we are. So if any of that resonates with you, again, welcome to our safe space. This is Intentional Conversations with Robin May and Friends. Well, hey, friend, welcome. Welcome to season two of Intentional Conversations with Robin May and Friends. I'm super excited about getting this season started. There are so many things that you can expect for season two. If you missed my trailer episode that outlined what you can expect for season two, girl, go back and check that out because I am ready to dive into our conversation today. Now, if this is your first time here, what I need you to know is that we keep it casual over here. Also, I need you to know your girl has a bit of attention challenges. So I keep notes in front of me so that I can stay on track. So when you see me looking down, girl, that's what I'm doing. We are very casual over here. Plus, you know how in church they say, I need you to talk back to me. Well, that's how we rock over here at the podcast. I need you to talk back to me. So I need you to head on over to Instagram. Make sure you are following me. Make sure you DM me your takeaways, your questions. Even if you are annoyed with something that I had to say, I want you to DM me and let me know. Also, if you haven't already, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, comment, let me know you are here. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, can you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? One more thing I need you to do, girl, then we're gonna dive in. I need you to tell your folk about the podcast. DM them, text them, post it on your Facebook page. If you go over to, or your Instagram, Baby, do you do TikTok? Do it on TikTok too. If you are um, following me on Instagram, I have a highlight that has a picture that you can grab in the highlights and share it with your people. I love listening to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. So again, I'm super excited that you are here. Now, again, if you're new, one of the things we do on the podcast is I try to focus on a topic, a theme, a series. And we lean into that for about four, five, sometimes six weeks. And then we go on to a new topic. And so we are starting season two off with a banger, honey. We are talking about the dating dilemma, navigating these dating streets as a Christian woman. The dating dilemma, navigating these Christian or these dating streets as a Christian woman woman now let me say this i told you girl we're getting right to it we are getting right to it my focus is for for this series okay is for christian women who are single who want to be married okay and i'm doing this specifically for christian women because i believe that a christian woman or i would hope that a christian woman has a worldview that is a Christ-centered worldview, right? That your worldview is narrowed by a Christian lens, right? That there are certain, every woman I hope has standards or expectations, but a Christian woman's standards or expectations, I believe would need to be governed by the word of God while somebody who is not a Christian woman They don't have those and neither should we force them to have those same standards. And our lens or our filter should be a Christ-centered filter, right? Um, And I'm even interested to talk, I'm interested in talking to Christian women. If you are a Christian woman, you're saying, Robin, I love Jesus, but I don't really care if my man does. I need you to do, 
I need you to, you're going to hear this. If you're new here, you're going to hear me asking you to DM me all the time, okay? And trust me, I will get to the DM. If you DM me and I don't respond, don't worry about it, baby. I'm going to come across it. I'm going to find it. If you are a Christian woman and you're saying, I love Jesus, baby, but I, I'm not really tripping if my man does or not, can you DM me? I just want to hear your heart about it. I'm not going to get into a debate with you, I don't think. I just want to hear your heart about it. Um, so that's what our focus is for the next. I'm imagining we're going to be here for one, two, three, four, including this week, maybe five weeks. We're going to kind of lean in here now. If you are not single, if you are a married woman, girl, this is for you too. Because first of all, you need to tell your single friends to listen to it. Um, and I think also this can even help you consider and think through what's important to you in marriage. Because if you've been married longer than a day, or I'll say if you've been long, married longer than a year, I'll give you a year. Sometimes we need to sit back and rethink or not rethink whether we want to be married. I'm not saying that. But you need to make sure that what was okay with you at year one, it may be different in year two. It definitely will be different in year 22 because by the time you watch this, my husband and I should be about three weeks away from celebrating our 22nd marriage. I'm married anniversary, our 22nd anniversary. And so what was okay with us five years ago is not the same now. So this is for all the women, but my focus is on Christian women who want to be married. Now, before we get started, I want to share with you, I am relaunching a book, y'all, that I wrote all the way back in 2008. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see this says my copy. I'm holding up a copy of the book. I wrote a book in 2008 called Before You Take His Name, A Christian Perspective to Saying I Do. I was talking to a friend. Hey, girl, I was talking to a friend and I happened to reach out to her for something totally different. And she said, Robin, I cannot believe you reached out to me. I literally told somebody the other day, I'm about to take Robin's book off the shelf and reread it because there were some pointers in there that I need to remember. I am relaunching before you take his name because after that conversation, it was confirmation to me. I'd been thinking about it and that was just confirmation. Let me tell you a bit about before you take his name. Before you take his name gives you 14 questions you want to ask yourself before you say, I do. 14 questions you want to ask yourself. Not only that, also there are book club questions that expand the 14 questions even further. And then in addition to that, there are almost 40, 40 additional questions to consider before marriage. This is a great book. I like to call it a handbook because it's kind of small. This is a great book for you to read to make sure that you are taking everything that you can take into consideration before you take his name. So head over to robinmayonline.com slash book robinmayonline.com slash book. Now there you will see all the books that I have written and you will be able to pre-order a copy of Before You Take His Name. This pre-order copy, I mean, investment will be low, shipping will be included, and I want you to get your hands on it before it, um, I want you to get your copy secured, let me put it like that, before it is released, okay? Hey girl, I got to jump in right here because I gave you the wrong website. In order to access before you take his name, head over to robinmayonline.com slash shop books or on my Instagram, robinmayonline. You can click the link in my bio, robinmayonline.com slash shop books. Okay, let's get back to the podcast. All right, so let's dive into this conversation. As I prepared for our time, I was thinking about, Robin, what do you want everybody to get from this series? What are you hoping to accomplish? And there are three things I want to see happen from this entire series, not just this episode, but from this entire series. First, I want you to feel validated. I want to validate the experience so many of you are having. I want you to feel helped. I want you to gain clarity about your line in the sand. I want to help you gain clarity about your line in the sand. And I'll explain that in a minute. And I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know, girl, that you are not alone in this journey. So 
If I can accomplish those three things, I'm going to feel really good. So let me know at the end of the series if I accomplished it. If I didn't, honey, even if we moved on to another series, I will circle back. I will circle back. If you do not feel validated in your experience, if you don't feel helped or encouraged. So let me tell you what I mean by validated. So some of you are wondering if you are the issue. And I want you to know that more than likely, <laughs> more than likely, now I can't say 100%, girl, because I'm not in your business like that. But more than likely, you are not the issue. Now, you know we keep it real over here. You know we keep it real over here. Yes, girl, there are some things that you need to work on. But in a larger context, I want you to know that you are not too something. You're not too loud or too quiet. You're not too um, uh, bossy or a uh, pushover. You're not too strong or too weak. That is not the issue for most of you. It's not that you haven't prayed enough or fasted enough because honey, there are plenty of women who are getting married who ain't prayed or fasted at all. So I don't want you to think that you are the issue. Honestly, y'all, I believe what's going on in these dating streets is much bigger than that. And I want to talk about it. So then when I said, I want to help you discover what your line in the sand is, y'all, we all need a line in the sand. We all, whether you're looking for a job, whether it's talking about a spouse, whether it's talking about um, I don't know, something with your children, you need to have a line in the, in the sand. In other words, I want you to know what are your standards? What are the things, now listen, I can adjust this, but I'm not going to adjust that. I can be okay with that, but I am just not okay with this. In other words, what is your standard? I want you to get clear on what your standard is. That's what I mean by a line in the sand. Now, sis, I want you to hear me. You can't have 50, 11 lines in the sand. <laughs> Girl, you cannot have 15 things that you're like this, this, this. Baby, by the time you get to number seven, you're going to be exhausted, okay? And you want to make sure whatever your line in the sand is something that you can live up to as well. So that's the other thing. I want to help you gain clarity of that with that. And then I want to encourage you. I want you to know you are not alone. There are many women, and I'm sure, girl, over brunch or when y'all just on the phone chit-chatting, when y'all are sending, you know how y'all send each other all of those Instagram reels in your DM, y'all just sending them back and forth, just back and forth. I know my girlfriends who are listening are like, no, Robin, that's you. You send us <laughs> reels. I mean, I'm a real machine, baby. I'm sending reels all day. But I want you to know that you are not by yourself. People say misery loves company. But what I have found is not that people want other people to be miserable. They just want to know that they're not dealing with something by themselves, that they are not crazy. And I'm here to help you know, girl, that you are not crazy. Okay. So why did I want to do this particular series? Well, first, because over here at Intentional Conversations with Robin May and Friends, I want to talk about all the things. I want to talk about all the things that matter to you as a woman. When we talk about living with intention, I'm talking about you living with intention in every area of your life. So girl, if it matters to you, I want to talk about it. Sis, that's why I'm always asking you to DM me. DM me, girl. And let me know what's on your heart and what's on your mind. So that's the first thing. It's something that I know so many of my listeners are dealing with this dating and what's going on in dating. So that's really one of the reasons why I wanted to listen to it or I wanted to talk about it. But specifically because I have so many personal friends so many personal friends and girl, so many clients, so many clients who are navigating these dating streets. And I'm watching them navigate dating. I'm seeing them fight to maintain their self-worth. I'm watching them trying to decide if this issue is worth shutting down the situation or am I tripping? Am I doing too much? I'm watching people I love desire to have children, but not seeing or finding someone that is ready for that level of marriage and commitment. So I'm sitting on the sidelines, really, 
I feel like I'm in the game with some of y'all. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I don't feel like I'm on the sidelines. I feel like I am in the game, but it is truly my pleasure and honor to be on the journey with so many of y'all. Okay. But with that, I want to tell you this. I also want to be sensitive about how I discuss this issue. Can I tell you the feedback that I've heard from some people? Now, I've thrown this out to certain people. Some of them have said, well, no, that's not what I'm dealing with. But so many of you have told me that you have felt like married women can sometimes come across a bit like a know-it-all or married women can feel like kind of a bit self-righteous, like, girl, let me help you understand what you need to do to get a man. And some of the things that they are saying, you're like, girl, I've been doing that. And so I want to be sensitive to it because like I said, I've said this before, so many of my friends have told me, Robin, you are not in the dating streets. And quite frankly, because you got married in your 20s, you ain't been in the dating streets, okay? So I am sensitive to that. Now, now, don't get me wrong, because there is wisdom from married women that you want to listen to. And I will personally stand firm in the fact that because this is the work I do, I really am in the trenches and I feel like I have a unique perspective because I have been in the trenches like many therapists probably understand. Y'all, I have been on more dating sites than I probably should be as a married woman. Honey, if you're listening to this, not because I'm looking for nobody, but you know, we go on the dating sites together, me and my single friends, and I'm trying to say, okay, no, yes, swipe left, run. <laughs> so I have been on more dating sites than I like to imagine. I have been in the trenches with so many people. I've listened to more scenarios than you could ever imagine. I have walked and talked and prayed with so many people through this journey. So I know I can help you, sis. I know I can help you, but I want to be sensitive to how I do that. So I'm sharing today from a clinical perspective and one with many, many years of experience. So I want to be real about this also, and this is going to make some people upset. They're going to, this is going to make some people upset, but I'm going to tell you this. I don't necessarily love the idea of telling people, if you do this and you do this, you will definitely find a man. Y'all, I don't like that idea because I believe that we are all different and there is just no magic formula. I don't believe there is no um, guarantee. If there was a magic formula, baby, whoever created it would be a multimillionaire. Everybody, I would be paying for people to go sit with that person. Now, don't get me wrong. I do agree with dating matchmakers. Matchmakers, I think some matchmakers are really good. But if a matchmaker or somebody is telling you, I'm telling you, if you do this, this, and this, you'll definitely find somebody. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, you just got to know I am being very dramatic with my no, because I think you have to be careful about that. You definitely can be coached into being a uh, to, to dating well. I do think you can be coached into dating well. As a matter of fact, y'all, I sometimes wish my clients or my friends can take an earpiece and have an earpiece because I'm really good with scripts. Girl, say this. Don't say that. Girl, no, don't do that. So I do think you can be coached into dating well, but I don't think selling a pipe dream is fair. Okay. So in this series, again, my focus is to make sure you know you are not crazy and I want to normalize some things for you. And then I want one of my processes in helping clients is that we empathize. Well, I empathize, I normalize, and I strategize. So that's what we're going to be doing throughout this series. All right. Now, I want you to also know that there may be some things, sis, that you need to work on. You hear me? There may be some things that you need to work on, but I don't want you to think about working on it with the mindset of I'm working on this so that I can get a man. I want you to work on some things just because we are all a work in progress. But when you think about dating in particular, I have a, uh, a girlfriend who she's dating um, and her love language is gifts. That's just her love language. I promise you, if she met you today and she hit it off with you and she thinks you're cool and you tell her something she's like girl i'm gonna get such and such this because that's just her love language and so when you think about being coached in dating 
what we often tell her, girl, you just met him two weeks ago. I know he just got that promotion, but we're not going to get him that big old gift. You can send him a congratulations text because what happens when she does that is her love language is gifts. She starts pouring things into people and then she's disappointed when she hasn't gotten it back. But the, the level of the relationship wasn't ready for that much of her expression. Baby, that was good. Did you write that down? Did you write that down? I need you to have jotted that down. I don't really remember what I said. So go back, rewind the tape, honey, because that was good. So that's what I mean. You may have some things to work on because she had to learn how to be careful with her expressions of love or her express, not necessarily love, even her, just her expressions. She had to be careful about that because she was setting herself up for failure because she was giving somebody all of who she was when they hadn't earned that access into her heart. <laughs> Baby, that was good too. Rewind that. Okay. So there may be some things that you need to work on, some things you need to massage, but sis, more than likely you are not flawed so bad that it's keeping you from a mate. I want you to shift that perspective. Can you, somebody DM me and say, Robin, I have shifted my perspective. And even this, okay, this isn't in my notes, but so I'm nervous about going here, but I'm gonna go here. Even when it comes to the fact that we know that God is ultimately, again, this is for Christian women, God is ultimately in control. We know that, don't we? Don't we know that? And so it may be that this is just not when God has released your spouse to you. And there may be a reason he hasn't released your spouse to you, but it's not because you are flawed or so jacked up. Girl, I really feel strongly that you need to hear me on that. I really need you to hear me on that. I need you to understand that it's not because there's something inherently wrong with you. You're dope, girl. It's nothing inherently wrong with you. Your quirkiness, it is dope. Your humor is dope. Somebody can handle that sarcasm. Ask me how I know, okay? So I want to share with you my perspective about these dating streets for grown women. You want to know my perspective? I believe it is a whole hot mess. <laughs> I believe these dating streets are a whole hot mess. Y'all, when I have the nerve to get annoyed with my husband about something, my friends nor my sister, nobody's loyal because they all say, stick and stay, sis. We don't care. I don't care how annoyed you are, Robin. Get over it because ain't nothing in these streets. I ain't going nowhere. No way. Love you, baby but I ain't going nowhere anyway, but they remind me. So I do think the dating streets are a mess. Now I told you I wanted this podcast to be encouraging and I know that that's not quite encouraging, but baby over here, we keep it real. And I just want to validate that for you. For many of you, now some of you are having a ball, go on with your bad self, but some of you are really wondering if it's you. And I think it's a mess y'all. Now, what we have to know is that if God has intended that you will be a married woman, take a deep breath. I really want you to take a deep breath. If God, like I need you to think about that. This is where, okay, I'm taking off my podcaster hat. I am taking off my therapist hat. I am taking off my coach hat and I am putting on my hat as pastor and first lady. I want you to ask yourself, what do you believe about God? And what do you believe about his word? Remember this episode, this series is focused on Christian women. And I want you to ask yourself, what do you think about God? And what do you think about his word? Why am I saying that? Because if you understand the word, then you understand that we serve a sovereign God. That means your life is in his hand. And if we serve a so sovereign God, God is nowhere wondering, questioning, trying to figure out how to find you a mate. If we serve a sovereign God, he's already ordained it. He's already identified him and it will come to pass. So if you want to have a deeper sense of resolve, take a deep breath and remember 
If God's plan is for you to be married, you will be married. He is not someone saying, oh my God, I forgot to save one for Sally. Oh no, I forgot to save one for Susie. I promise you, your God is more strategic, more in control than that. So if he intends for you to be married, you will be. But I know, girl, that the journey is draining. So I want to help you with the journey. So why do I say it's a hot mess? Well, I believe that there has been a cultural shift that has impacted the expectations that both men and women have about relationships and also the expectation they have about marriage. And that shift is impacting genuine connectivity and ultimately what many of you long for. Let me give it to you again, honey, because that was deep. Okay, I believe there has been a cultural shift in society. Maybe I should say a societal shift that has impacted the expectations that both men and women have about relationships and the expectations that they have about marriage and that that is impacting genuine connectivity and hindering ultimately what many of you want. So there was a time that marriage was seen by mo both men and women as the goal, right? And that has changed dramatically. I even looked this up and I read this. People marry at an older age than before. There are more remarriages. Fewer people marry in a church or a religious ceremony. And now people marry for love instead of economic reasons. Now, this is not about to be a dissertation on marriage and the history or the historical nature of marriage. But y'all, even that was huge. Fewer marriages are taking place in the church. People are marrying now for love instead of economic reasons. Y'all know that's true, right? You know, back in the day, great, great grandmama had to marry because that was really her only choice or opportunity to really, baby, go read, go read your history, honey. That was often the only way great grandmama, maybe grandmama for some of us would have some opportunity. Things have changed culturally. Yes, even for Christians. I even looked up what is the medium age for marriage. And it used to be 20 to 21. Now the medium age to get married is 30. And most of the people who listen to my podcast, baby, y'all have been past 30. Okay. Many of you. <laughs> Many of y'all have been past 30. You don't even remember <laughs> what 30 looks like. <laughs> Listen, I ain't talking about y'all because in this here year of our Lord, your girl is going to be 50. Ooh, ooh, Jesus. I can't believe I just said that out of my mouth. So I'm not just talking about y'all, but the medium age is 30. And also y'all, did you know the statistics say that men benefit more from marriage than women? Um, we know, like I said earlier, at one point women married for financial stability or even to be able to buy a house. But now most often women are out earning men, especially black women. And the statistics state that a man's whole life, his money, his health, his mental health, all of that improves from marriage and women be getting woke down in marriage. It's just not funny. I don't know why I laughed, y'all. That's not funny. That's really overwhelming because there's a reason women be getting broke down in marriage, but we're going to talk about that when we get to the marriage series. Okay. Also, now what am I talking about? I'm talking about how things have shifted, right? Also, did you know that most of the time, if there is a death or a divorce, that the man is definitely going to remarry more quickly than the woman does? Did y'all know that? And so... Again, I'm trying to help you see that the realities of marriage are so different and therefore the dating scene is different. But I haven't even gone here yet. This is what I also think. I believe reality, y'all, we should do a Zoom call about this. Like I really enjoy this conversation because I enjoy normalizing things for people. I really should do a Zoom call on this, but listen, I really think that reality TV movies, music, and social media 
have drastically impacted the dating scene more than we want to talk about. We first have to understand that our culture or society or our viewpoint is shaped by arts and entertainment. Can we agree with that? Can we agree? Remember, this is church. You got to talk back to me. I want to hear you saying, yes, girl. I heard you, sis. Okay. So since um, culture is shaped by arts and entertainment, what we see and what we listen to. Now, as a side note, that's why as Christian women, you got to be careful what you're watching and what you're listening to because it begins to shape your idea and your ideals. Okay. Now, some people would argue, Robin, what came first, the chicken of the, or the egg, is social media, movies, TV, is that an expression of reality or is it shaping reality? And I think it can be both, but I do stand by this principle. He who has the mic has the power. So I think that the folks with the mic have shaped and reshaped what what relationships look like. Again, he who holds the mic holds the most power. And I believe the folks with the mic have shaped and reshaped what relationships look like. And that is impacting the dating scene. So what do I mean by who has the mic? What are entertainers doing? What are the rappers rapping? What are the R&B singers singing? What is happening in reality TV? What's shown on the movies? What's shown on TV shows? Like that is shaping the perception and the expectation of what happens in relationships. And I know you are strong-willed, girl, but I am telling you that it is impacting our expectations and we have to be real intentional to not allow culture to infiltrate our values girl that was good too we gotta how you gonna tell your own self that it was good but if you don't pat your own self on the back who will baby that was good you have to be careful not to let culture infiltrate your belief system but i believe that's what's happening i think that what's happening that the person people Arts and entertainment, they have the mic and they are shaping it. Y'all know the song I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that, baby, that is shaping the, she got her own car. She got her own, that is shaping. Some of y'all are too, some of y'all don't know. I was about to say something. Else. Some of y'all don't know that song. That's okay. But when I say the music is impacting us, that's what I mean. I hear so many women telling me things like, Robin, men don't just, they don't approach women like they used to. They wait for you to approach. Men don't feel like they need to pursue you. These dudes will text, hey, and then wait for you to say something. It's not a given that if you go on a date that he's going to necessarily pay for it. It's He's expecting you to sleep with him after he says, hello. Why am I hearing that from so many women who are dating different dudes? Because that is what has begun to shape our culture. Now, I can't remember if I said this at the top, so let me pause and say this. This podcast here is not a man bashing platform. Y'all, I don't play that. This is not about dogging men. However, my audience, this podcast is for women. So I am speaking to the heart of women. And again, remember, my goal is to validate what you've been experiencing so that you don't think you are crazy. There has been a shift. And I'm sure that men are experiencing a shift from women as well. So if you find a podcast that is geared towards men, tell him to holler at me and I'll come over there and chat with them. But over here, I am trying to help you understand that you're not crazy, sis. And I'm hearing the same thing from so many women, so there is something to it. And I believe what is happening in the dating scene is that there has been a shift in roles and responsibilities and expectations. And in my humble but researched opinion, it has been skewed toward this idea that the man is the prize and the woman can get in where she fits in. And if she doesn't want to get in where she fits in, baby, there's another woman who will. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, Robin, you are speaking 
the truth. Somebody DM me and say, girl, around this period, look at the time marker. What's the time marker? So Robin, around time marker, you were telling the truth. Now, I'm out here now. But I'm telling you, that is what I've observed is kind of skewing toward the man is the prize where for many times it was the woman being pursued. And you have women now who still want to be seen as valuable, who still want to be appreciated, who still believe in a man pursuing a woman, a woman who still desires a gentleman. And those women are starting to think that their expectations are unrealistic. And so what I have seen, you know, I have watched this time and time again, and I want to gently warn you so it doesn't happen to you if it hasn't already. I have seen so many women begin to water down their expectations. They begin to settle in what matters to them. They begin to adjust their standards y'all and i've watched it happen so many times and i've tried to probe and ask in hopes that they can see what is happening but they continue down that role and i'm telling you they i have watched women get married and then five ten years later they look up and wonder how did i get here now, girl, even with that, there is no judgment because sometimes the red flags can be deceiving. It's hard to know. Wait a minute. Am I tripping about this? Is this really a big deal? Am I being too demanding? Is this something I should really be concerned about? Can I overlook this, y'all? It's hard. It's hard. Now, that's why I'm going to stop right here and do a shameless plug of before you take his name because what i am doing with before you take his name marriage is a risk saying i do is a risk but have you ever heard of risk mitigation i am trying to help you decrease the risk as much as possible to at least have some kind of guide to kind of at least can i answer affirmative to 14 these 14 questions have i at least done my due diligence now and i can trust the holy spirit as i am going through this because it is hard but there is something I want you to repeat over and over. If you are dating and you want to be married, I want you to repeat this over and over again. It is better to be single than married and miserable. I want you to repeat that over and over again. It is better to be single than married and miserable because I have watched so many women because they want a life partner and there's nothing wrong with wanting a life partner. I was talking to somebody just today, the day I'm recording this, I was talking to one of my clients. Hey girl, I was talking to one of my clients and we got on this topic and she said, you know, Robin, I do want a life partner. I don't want to die alone. I want to have somebody that's my person. But she said, but you know, I'm not willing to settle. I'm just not willing to settle. Um, and, and that's a murky, that's a murky place. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. Another thing about the dating scene has changed. The opportunities for organic connection has shifted with the introduction again of social media. Now you get a DM when somebody wants to connect and then the DM, like I said, they'll just say, Hey, and you're like, Hey, what? Like, what am I supposed to say about that after that, right? And it can seem like what used to be a casual conversation that begins to move into an interest is no longer there. Then you introduce dating sites, which again, I'm not against. I'm all for dating sites. If I didn't think my husband would shut it all the way down, I would start my own dating site, but I know he ain't going to put up with that. But you are on these dating sites and the man has in his bio don't swipe left if you have kids or i am a spiritual being but i just want to kick it and have fun or i am a high value man looking for a woman who can handle y'all i told y'all i was in the loop of this i know that that is so frustrating do not get me started on this high value man thing that may he rest in peace a certain youtuber I, don't get me started. Please DM me so I can tell you my thoughts about it because anyway, I know so many of you want organic, genuine connection, and it almost feels like it is not possible 
right? And you're open to the dating site, but what happens for a grown woman is you go to work and often you have a demanding job that pays well, but has you stressed. You fight the traffic to get home. You figure it out about dinner. Some of y'all are in school because you want to get a higher education because you're not sure what the future holds. And so you're saying, if it's all on me, I need to get a higher education so that I can make even more money. Some of you have a child. So by the time you've made sure your child is good, you may watch a little TV, but then you fall asleep on the couch. Then you wake up and it's like, let me go swipe. But by that time, you're exhausted. So girl, I just told you, I'm validating this for you. The dating scene has changed and is going to continue to, to change. And so this is what I want to encourage you to do as a single woman. I want you to identify what still matters to you. So the dating scene has changed. We got to accept that, right? But I want you to identify what still matters to you and then be flexible and adjust within that standard. So if genuine connection matters to you, how can you ensure that if you use a dating site, you still have that as a standard? If you go out with your friends and genuine connection matters to you, how can you still maintain that when you're out with your friends? I want you to identify what really matters to you and then be intentional about maintaining that regardless of how you meet people, okay? Now, I want to share a theory that I have about men and women in 2024. I want to share this theory with you. Okay. I believe there is a um, segment, is that the way I'm looking for, of women. I think around the ages of, this is a large range, but like 35 to maybe 45, maybe 50. And those women were taught probably by their mothers to be an independent woman to be a boss chick, to take care of herself, to handle her business, to have her, her career, maybe a, a part-time gig as well, or to be an entrepreneur. She was taught to be able to take care of everything that concerns her so she can handle it. But I believe that same age group of men were not necessarily taught how to align with that kind of woman. That's my theory. I think women were taught, be a bad chick, be a boss chick, be independent, be able to handle business and be able to take care of your man, right? But many men around that age were not necessarily taught how to align with that type of woman. Then, this is still a part of my theory. I Listen, this is just my theory, okay? Many times when I'm listening to women and they start to share some concerns that they are having in a relationship with a man, I can almost tell them, does he have either an enmeshed relationship with his mother or he has a strained relationship with his mother? Because often what begins to happen is the gentleman either has unrealistic expectations of the woman he's dating or he wants her to operate almost in a mother type role right like he wants her to be what his mother was either to him or what his mother was period so either he has unrealistic expectations of her or he wants her to emulate who his mother was. Am I talking to anybody? Has anybody experienced that? So it almost becomes this clash of the Titans. Like she's this independent woman and he doesn't quite know what to do that. He wants her to submit and, and follow him, but she's wanting to see where the heck he is going. And then you add to it women who were raised in a matriarchal home where they saw the woman handling business. Maybe there were not a lot of men in the home or even if they were, they saw the woman handling business. I believe all of that is playing a role, right? And there's this myth or this misnomer that women want to be in charge and they want to run it. Okay, some of us do, okay? <laughs> we may want to, but most women I know, including myself, women want to be able to take a deep breath. They want to know that you can handle it. But the problem is if she is getting married, she's meeting somebody or marrying it 
at 40, 45, 50. Y'all, you've been handling it by yourself for so long. It's not that you don't want to release or that you don't want to take a deep breath. You just got to know that he's going to handle it. But many times it becomes this almost he's trying to snatch control from you and your self-protection is resisting it. And then it just becomes this whole thing instead of both of you healing together. That's my theory. I want to know what you think about that. Be in me and tell me. Okay. So I know I've pointed out a lot, y'all. And we have so much more to talk about in this series. Over the next few weeks, you're going to hear from several of my girlfriends, women who've been married and divorced and are dating again, women who have not had a child but would love to have a child, women who are single but have children and they're in the dating scene. We're even going to have a bonus episode where we will hear from some fellas. I'm going to interview three men. I have three men in mind, including my husband. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> including my husband, but my girlfriends are saying, uh, Robin, Lee ain't been in these dating streets and it's not the same. He has not been in these dating streets in 23 years. Has it been, how long we've been married? He, he ain't been in these dating streets at least 23 years, okay? Because we've been married 22 in February. So, but he is going to give some insight and I have two other men who are single who are going to give some insight. So go ahead, lock this in share with your friends, tell them to tune in. Now, before we go, I want to address two things that comes up a lot. And then I'm going to leave you with a few things I think you can do if you desire to be married, but are waiting for the one. Okay. One of the questions I get is, Robin, how do you balance your emotions? Because dating is such an emotional roller coaster. There are four things I want, two things I want you to do and two things I want you not to do. There are two things I want you to do and two things I want you not to do. So number one, I want you to do your work. So how do you balance your emotions? You got to do your work. I want you to know your stuff, what you can handle, what you can't handle, um, your childhood trauma. I really want you to understand you. I want you to understand, can you handle dating multiple people at the same time? Or are you one of those people like, no, I can only focus on one person at a time. Well, if you focus on one person, how do you handle uh, making sure you're not getting caught up if y'all are not in a, um, a monogamous relationship, right? I want you to really do your work. The next one, I want you to manage your expectations. What are you expecting during this season when you're dating, when you're not dating? What do you, if you are dating, what are you expecting from them? Make sure that you're not fantasizing. You go on one date and you've already decided that this is your husband. I want you to manage your expectations. But next, I don't want you to internalize the messaging that does not apply to you. There's this messaging about what a good woman is, what a good... Do not internalize any of that. As long as you're doing your work, you're going to... God is going to open the door to connect you with the person that he has for you. And that person will be able to handle all of your itness, right? And so I don't want you to internalize messaging that speaks to you not being enough. And then I don't want you to ignore your values, maintain. That's why you got to know your values. That's why you got to maintain and be clear about what matters to you. So don't ignore your values. And you know, the other thing I want to address is that one of the things I hear from women often, so many times, is, you know, Robin, I've just accepted that I am just going to be single for the rest of my life. I just decided that that's my, my plight. And as a Christian woman, there is an aspect of our journey where God calls us to contentment. So if you are leaning towards contentment in this season of my life, I'm going to be content with what is, then okay. But I also want to make sure that you're not self-protecting and closing out hope. The Bible does say hope deferred makes the heart sick, but I want you to keep your heart with God. I want you to be careful about your words, what you say, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So I want you to read word that and say, what I'm choosing is contentment for this season I'm in. If my season changes, then glory be to God. How about that? Can we do that? Okay. A few things to do. I'm going to go through these really quick because this, this episode is much longer than I expected. Okay. But I say that every time. If you're new here, if you're new here, I say that every time. Every single time I say this episode is only going to be 20 minutes. And here we are. 
almost a full hour. Okay, what can you do if you are single and you desire to be married? This is what I want you to do. There are eight things. I literally just kept typing, so here they are. Number one, remember whose you are and what you believe. I want you to be intentional. Remember, you are God's daughter and remember what you believe. It's kind of what I talked about with maintaining your values in that, in that. Under number one, I want you to guard your heart and I want you to stay prayerful. Number two, I want you to adjust your algorithm. I'm going to preach a message on the algorithm, but very intentionally, I want you to adjust the algorithm of your heart and your life. Whew, let me tell you this story real quick. I was talking to somebody, I'm not going to say her name. I was talking to somebody and we were talking about this situation that was going on in pop culture and we were comparing kind of what people were saying on our Facebook feed about it. And the things that people were saying on her Facebook feed were way more egregious than what they were saying on mine. And what we realized is that the people that were on my Facebook feed, the algorithm that I have on Facebook and on Instagram, I just don't get a certain type of content because I've been very careful about what I've allowed into my realm. That's what I mean about adjust your algorithm. Be careful about what you are taking in. Be careful about what you are allowing in your, that's kind of what I meant by being careful of what you internalize. Be careful because this is such a sensitive topic that it could really impact your self-worth. With that, number three, I want you to stay away from those men versus women debates in settings that are not safe, in settings that are just, I want my way, you want your, I want you to stay away from those debates because those get very toxic. Even here, you saw me stop and say, listen, we're not bashing men. I'm just validating this for women. You want to be careful about those men versus women debates because most of the time they're useless and pointless because it's so general and it's not specific to your situation. So if I were you, I would stay away from them. Number four, I want you to invest in you. During this time, invest in you. Work on you. What brings you joy? What makes you happy? Who in your life can tell you the truth about you? Remember, I said there's nothing inherently wrong with you, but there are some things that you can massage and tweak. Make sure you have people in your life who can help you see, girl, that may be something you want to work on. Because, heck, that happens with me. As a married woman, I got to have people who can tell me the truth about me. So, number four, invest in yourself. Work on you. Number five, honor your heart. Honor your heart. Do not settle in ways that you know you're going to regret. Honor your heart. Number six, be honest about the messy middle. What do I mean? Be honest about the messy middle. What I mean by that is, it's okay just to admit, I ain't liking this. I don't like being by myself. I want a partner. I want a life partner. I do want to be connected with someone. Be honest about it. There is nothing wrong with just really telling your heart telling yourself in safe spaces telling yourself the truth don't try to put on a false bravado girl dm me and say girl i want a man i'm just gonna be honest be honest with the messy middle god can handle your honesty number seven i want you to check your own expectations what are your why are we talking about what men expect what are your expectations like if you are 50 years old and you want to be married and you meet somebody more than likely girl if you're 50 even if you don't have kids more than likely he probably gonna have a child now you may say robin at 50 i am just not interested in dating anybody with a one-year-old i'm i'm right here i'm with you sis but more than likely he may have he may have him a good at 50 let's see he could have him a good 17 year old at 50 she might be 25 honey that's fine, but she may he may have children. So when I talk about checking your own expectations, make sure that you don't have unrealistic expectations for what it is you truly want. Check your expectations. Are you open to dating somebody outside of your race? I think that it's okay if you say, no, I want to date somebody that is the same race as me. That's nothing wrong with that. But just consider, challenge, question your own expectations. 
Um, ask yourself, what are you expecting a man to bring to the table? Are you bringing that to the table? I want you to check your own expectations. And then lastly, number eight, the third time I'm doing a shameless plug, go ahead and grab before you take his name. Grab this and allow this to kind of guide your, your thoughts about um, what you're looking for, all right? So those are the eight things I want you to do. Y'all, we have so much to cover in this series. This is just episode one. Next week, I have my girl coming and she is sharing so freely about her dating journey. We are going to, in the episode after that, we're going to talk about, or the episodes after that, we're going to be talking about narcissism. We're going to be talking about love bombing. We're going to talk about um, dating when you have children. Girl, we are covering it all. I hope this first episode got you to thinking. DM me with your takeaway. Tell your friends to join us for this conversation. And I cannot wait to continue in season two with you. Bye, girl. I'll see you next time. Well, girl, that's it for this episode. I already know you have at least one aha, one takeaway that's going to help you continue to live intentionally, fully engaged. But before you go, girl, I have another opportunity for you to take your investment into you to the next level. Listen, you and I both know that there are some patterns that you have been dealing with for a long time. You and I both know that there's just something that you can't seem to identify that's keeping you from getting to the next level. Or maybe for you, girl, maybe this one is for you. Maybe things are good, but you just know they could be better, but you just don't quite know what the missing piece is. Well, after some prayerful consideration, I decided to offer to all of you what I'm calling bite-sized breakthroughs for busy women. Listen, girl, one of the things I hear all the time is, Robin, I just don't have the time. I truly want to get a PhD in me, but when in the world do I have the time? Well, I have you in mind with bite-sized breakthroughs for busy women. Listen, girl, this is your no excuse path to identifying what you need to understand so that you can see, experience, and curate the life you love. Bite-sized breakthroughs is your opportunity to discover what's necessary to push past what's stopping you one aha at a time. This is a low investment, no risk opportunity for you. So stop what you're doing right now. Head on over to robinmayonline.com slash breakthrough. robinmayonline.com slash breakthrough. This one is for you.